Closed captioning sponsored by Superior Toyota Hyundai and WBU Medicine Camden Clark. Live from our studios at One Television Plaza, this is WTAP News at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Before we dive into primary election coverage, there is a threat of severe weather with a tornado watch in effect. Meteorologist Kirk Greenfield joins us now live with your forecast. Kirk. Very humid and warm in the mid-Ohio Valley. As a result, that tornado watch runs until 9 tonight. As we take a look at the Highmark West Virginia Skycam, the lighting looks a little bit odd. That's because we have a line of showers moving in from the west even as we speak. Right now, we're at 83 degrees, 39% relative humidity, winds out of the southwest at 7, and the barometer 29.75 inches and falling rapidly. There is a severe thunderstorm warning for Caldwell and points north. That runs until about 645. That has just popped up. But we are all under the tornado watch, what's in yellow here until 9 o'clock. And behind the logo here, let's see if I can drag this down for you. Yes, there is a tornado warning in Pennsylvania, by coincidence, in a county known as Washington County, Pennsylvania, not necessarily for the rest of us. So our evening planner says at 8 o'clock will be 73, cloudy with a possible thunderstorm, and that continues through midnight when we're about 65. I'll be back in a few minutes with an update on the situation. Back to you. Thank you, Kirk. Today is officially primary election day in Ohio. Polls for in-person voting opened at 6.30 this morning. Voters have until 7.30 tonight to get in line at their local polling place to vote. Ohio voters will decide on their next governor as Mike DeWine is running for re-election. He is facing a challenge from three opponents, Joe Blystone, Ron Hood, and Jim Renacci. On the Democratic side, John Cranley is facing Nan Whaley. Rob Portman's open U.S. Senate seat is also on the ballot as he faces seven Republican challengers. In Washington County, voters will be deciding several local issues and levies, including levies for Belpre, Marietta, and Wolf Creek schools. We will continue to have election coverage and results later tonight on WTAP. Ohio Republicans are voting Tuesday in one of the most contentious and closely watched Senate primaries in the nation. Author and venture capitalist J.D. Vance is seen as the GOP frontrunner in the race to replace retiring Senator Rob Portman after receiving former President Donald Trump's endorsement. The winner is likely to face 10-term Democratic Congressman Tim Ryan in what is expected to be a brutal November for Democrats. Incumbent Republican Governor Mike DeWine appears well positioned to secure his party's nomination for another term. In Indiana, more than a dozen state House members are trying to fend off Republican challenges from the right. Ohio Republican Governor Mike DeWine is facing a test of the far right's sway as he seeks another term in office. DeWine remains the favorite in Tuesday's primary, despite losing some of the backing of some conservative groups who were angry over his aggressive pandemic policies. He's up against three far right challengers in the primary, including former Congressman Jim Renacci. Ohio's Democrats are deciding between former Cincinnati Mayor John Cranley or former Dayton Mayor Nan Whaley as their nominee for governor. Democrats have not won the governor's office in nearly 16 years. Ohio's Republican primary for Secretary of State features a matchup between incumbent elections chief Frank LaRose, and conservative challenger John Adams, who has questioned the 2020 presidential election results. The winner of Tuesday's Republican primary will face Democrat Chelsea Clark in November's general election. Despite Adams' open questioning of the 2020 results, former President Donald Trump's endorsement of LaRose was expected given LaRose's 2016 support for Trump and his role on a team that handled logistics for Trump's 2017 inauguration. LaRose also brings the strength of incumbency to his campaign and adopted some of Trump's talking points about voter fraud ahead of Trump's endorsement. The bombshell leak of a draft opinion suggesting the Supreme Court is poised to overturn the landmark Roe v. Wade case legalizing abortion nationwide has set the country on a course for an even more polarized and fluctuating landscape of abortion rights. This is video of protests outside the Supreme Court from our D.C. Bureau. Almost immediately, Republicans who had fostered a decades-long push to end abortion rights cheered Roe's potential fall. 
Democrats vowed to fight the possible loss of a constitutional right that has been in place for nearly half a century. About half of U.S. states are expected to ban abortion if Roe falls, and 13 states have so-called trigger laws that would immediately ban abortion if it is overturned. When Ohio voters cast their ballots in the primary today, they men may end up voting again in some races. WTAP Washington News Bureau's Nicole Newman joins us live now from Washington, D.C. to explain why. Nicole. Phyllis, the loss in population in the 2020 census caused Ohio to lose a seat in Congress, shrinking its congressional map from 15, 16, excuse me, to 15 districts. Now, at least one political expert I spoke to says the process to redraw the district map may end up causing voters to return to the polls later this year to recast their ballots. Well, the truth is the, the Ohio primaries, and I'll, I'll talk about them in plural, are a mess. Confusing and uncertain. That's how Dr. Paul Beck, professor emeritus of the Ohio State University, explained what's happening with Ohio's redistricting map for congressional districts. Beck says it's because of legal challenges to the congressional district map drawn by the Ohio Redistricting Commission that may lead to the Ohio State Supreme Court tossing it out. If that happens, he says when Ohioans go back to vote in a potential August primary for the state legislature, they may have to recast their ballot for congressional races. Jen Miller, the executive director of the League of Women Voters of Ohio, says it's unlikely the map will be thrown out. The league is suing over claims of gerrymandering, but justices won't hear arguments until after the May 3rd primary. Once we uh, file our evidence and have our witnesses and depositions, all of these things, it's unlikely but possible that the congressional map could be struck down and changed in time for the November general election. With the timeline for filing paperwork, Miller believes the new congressional district map will stay in place. Despite the legal challenges over the congressional map, Miller says it's still important for voters to cast their ballots in this primary because they likely won't get a second chance. In Washington, Nicole Newman, WTAP News. Thank you for that live report, Nicole. And we did reach out to the Ohio Redistricting Commission for this report. We did not hear back. Still ahead, our election coverage continues with a look at local school levies on the ballot. That story is coming up next at 6. And a tornado watch continues until 9 o'clock tonight, but strong thunderstorms are likely. In fact, we're hearing them arrive right now. That's next. Tonight's news poll is sponsored by Baker and Baker Jewelers and by The Basement Doctor of West Virginia. You're watching WTAP News at 6 with Phyllis Smith, Kirk Greenfield with your pinpoint weather forecast, and Ryan Wilson with sports. The fate of multiple school levies are up to voters tonight. Our Laura Bowen is live in the Digital Center with details. Laura. County. One is for Belpre City Schools. This is a new one. It would put tax dollars towards building a new middle school and high school, as well as improving existing school facilities. There's actually two levies for Marietta City Schools. One is meant to help with current expenses. The other will go to what's described as permanent improvements. This includes school buses, textbooks, building renovations, and technology. Both levies are renewals. Finally, there's a levy for Wolf Creek Schools. This is another renewal. Money will be going towards the school district's emergency requirements. These levies will pass if the majority of voters vote in their support. Polls close at 7.30. A reminder that if you're still in line at 7.30, you won't get turned away. Back to you, Phyllis. Laura Bowen reporting live in the Digital Center. Laura, thank you. Now let's go to Kirk Greenfield for another look at the forecast. Kirk. We're hearing the thunder roll in Parkersburg right now as the storms arrive. 
all up and down the mid-Ohio Valley. Let's take a look at our radar satellite composite, and as you can see, there's a couple of cells that are particularly intense. We've laid a cone here from the uh, most serious one that is draped over Cambridge. However, the warning also includes Caldwell, half of Noble County, Muskingum County, and points to the north and the east as these all train to the northeast at about 50 miles per hour. Now, we've just seen a line of strong storms arrive here, and it does look like halfway between Marietta and Parkersburg, there's a more intense cell that uh, will be producing some torrential downpour, if not hail. Looks a little gloomy here on the Jan Dills Marietta Skycam atop the Lafayette Hotel. 50, make that 83 degrees, 39 percent relative humidity prior to the storms arriving. The winds out of the southwest at 7, the pressure 29.75 inches and falling. The allergy alert says pollen levels medium high today, expected to be washed down just a little tomorrow, but Thursday surging back, mulberry, oak, and sycamore, the most common pollens. Here's the tornado watch. It's everything in yellow that you can see, and here's the severe thunderstorm warning that includes Caldwell and again portions to the north and west. This is all moving to the northeast, including a tornado warning in Pennsylvania behind our logo. So let's take a look at our current temperatures. 86 in Charleston, 83 for Parkersburg, 70 in Athens. So they've been cooled down. 63 in Columbus. Winds generally from the southwest, maybe 7 to 8 miles per hour. And we're about 7 degrees warmer than we were yesterday at this same time. Most recent image, again, shows very heavy cells here going across in the Ohio River into Wood County, up into Washington County, and this is tracking to the northeast about 50 miles per hour. It's one of several lines that are all swirling around a low pressure center that's over near Chicago and is fueling this as we track through the warm sector between the warm front and batting clean up the cold front as it comes up behind. So Futurecast has a pretty good handle on this. It suggests that there'll be several lines that'll be coming through at times this evening. Some will be more intense than others. And then as we get into Wednesday, overcast, a little gloomy and a little bit cooler as we go. Thursday looks like we'll start to see some break up in the clouds as we get to the Thursday evening. Again, the convective outlook suggests that we're under slight risk of severe thunderstorms and that's paying off right now. So our forecast says 60 for the low tonight with thunderstorms and heavy brief rainfall. Tomorrow, 66 with an isolated shower early. And the extended forecast says about every other day there's a significant chance of rain showers as we go through this week. As we flirt with high temperatures, they'll be in the 70s and then the 60s through the course of this week. Tonight's winner for the Sketch of the Outdoors contest, sponsored by People's Bank, is Rockets and Rainbows by Sienna Barber, age 10, from Belpre. Hope I'm saying that right. If you like to enter the daily contest, submit your digital copy of your child's outdoor artwork on our WTIP webpage. Look for the entry, sketch the outdoors, and follow the directions to upload and enter. A new winner is drawn each weekday and presented at both 6 and 11 p.m. newscasts. Phyllis? Thank you, Kirk. Still ahead, the Give Local MOV campaign kicks off to help nonprofits in the area. That story is next at 6. Today marks the start of the Parkersburg Area Community Foundation's annual Give Local MOV campaign. The nonprofit is looking to raise funds for organizations in the Mid Ohio Valley region over the course of today. The group has a total of 63 nonprofits that are looking to raise funds and awareness for their mission. Over the last few months, the Parkersburg Area Community Foundation has made an early mission to raise funds for today and to look to give back with the help of local businesses. A tagline that it's not only give local but it's buy local because so many of our local matching funds are made possible by locally owned businesses and by local donors as well and so those matching funds and those sponsorships wouldn't be possible unless they had the support from our community buying their products and their services. The foundation is also looking to give out prizes for matching funds today. If you would like to donate, you can click on the link on WTAP.com. May marks Motorcycle Safety Awareness Month. The time between May and September are the prime months for motorcycle riding. Last year, in the state of Ohio alone, there were a total of over 4,000 motorcycle crashes with 223 fatalities in those crashes. The Ohio State Highway Patrol says that an important measure to take is to always be extra cautious around motorcyclists whenever they are on the road. So just take that second look. Um, slow down, I sound like a broken record when we say that, but just slow down because it can save a life. Um, and the uh, motorcycle safety is not just the motorcyclist's responsibility. It, it is 
uh, up to a certain point, but it's everyone else's responsibility just to take that second look. Officials want to remind motorcyclists to wear a helmet and to go through the steps of getting a motorcycle endorsement. Last year in Ohio, 54% of at-fault motorcycle drivers did not have a motorcycle endorsement. Coming up in sports, the Parkersburg Big Reds have two student athletes signed to play college sports. Ryan Wilson has that plus our student athlete of the week coming up next in sports. For our Jan Dill Student Athlete of the Week, we head to Belpre High School for a multiple sports star for the Golden Eagles. Evan Lasik has more with Caitlin Bush. Student Athlete of the Week is sponsored by Jan Dill's Attorneys at Law and WTAP. This is home. Caitlin Bush is a junior softball and basketball player for the Lady Golden Eagles of Belpre, Ohio. As an upperclassman, Caitlin knows what is the most important reason to be a student athlete. To be a student athlete at Belfry, of course, means being a good student and being a role model to everybody else. And especially now that I'm officially part of the upperclassmen, I guess I need to be like looked at as a role model and kind of be an inspiration to everybody else. At the start of this softball season, the Golden Eagles were all switched around and there was a learning curve to their new positions. But as the season progressed, so did the play of the team. As a team, I think we've grown a lot, like just because everybody had different positions this year, so it was kind of chaotic at first. And now that everybody's settled in, I feel like we're definitely progressing. Their success throughout the season helped the Lady Golden Eagles achieve their goal of winning their division. Caitlin is hoping this season has the best possible outcome. It's actually very exciting because I guess we've been really working on this. And that was one of our goals was to win the TVC this year. Getting a first round bye was also really cool because we didn't get that last year. We won our game and then got knocked out by Notre Dame last year. So hopefully we're set up in the tournament way easier now. With her junior year winding down, Caitlin looks forward to being a leader for the basketball team and the softball team next year. But with that thought, Caitlin knows what being the leader on a team can entail. Scary. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just, it's nervous or nerve wracking just because I guess everybody's going to be watching me since I'm the senior. Like everybody's going to kind of look at me now since I'm the upperclassman. From Belpre, Evan Lasik, WTAP Sports, this is home. We now head to Parkersburg High School where two student athletes signed on to college athletics. We start with Zadrian Snodgrass, who is heading just across the river to play to Marietta to play football for the Pioneers this fall. Zadrian was joined by friends, family, and teammates at the field house as he revealed the next step of his athletic journey. Zadrian says Coach Waddle has talked to him about playing linebacker, a position, a position that he is excited to master over the next four years. Uh, it's exciting just because like, that's kind of, that's kind of like how my nature is, like a linebacker at heart. So. I think it'll be fun. You know, that's what I've always wanted to play, and uh, I'm glad I get to pursue it to the next level. So uh, I think the main thing I really need to work on is probably my speed and endurance, I think. Uh, I think the strength's already there, honestly. I just need to really kind of push for that next level of speed and endurance just to be ready for the next level. And we'll stay at Parkersburg High School as Kendall Dominic is signing on to run track and field for the University of Charleston Golden Eagles. Kendall was a multiple sports star for the Parkersburg Big Reds, but it ultimately came down to the culture and feel of the track and field team that led to her decision. She chose UFC because she won't be too far from her parents coming to watch her and being able to see her friends play back in Parkersburg. Kendall specializes in the hurdles and she is excited to be able to just focus on track at the next level. It'll definitely be different than what I'm used to, but I'm excited to focus on one thing and I think it's really going to help me improve and with their great coaches and great culture, I think it's going to be great. Working on my endurance and just doing the workouts that I'm given all summer, that's going to be really important going into it and I want to go in prepared and ready to go. And so for tonight's sports poll question, we head to the NBA and with only the final eight teams left, we're asking you who you think will win the NBA championship. The choices are the Milwaukee Bucks, Phoenix Suns, Golden State Warriors, or one of the other five teams still remaining. You can vote on that in the sports section of WTAP.com. Phyllis, the rain's coming down now, but we do have some softball action and some sectionals tonight. St. Mary's is hosting Ritchie County, so we'll have the highlights of that tonight at 11. Thank you, Ryan. When we come back, Kirk has one last look at your forecast. Tonight's sports poll sponsored by Contractors Building Supply. 
You can download the free Pinpoint Weather app from WTAP and get all the weather information downloaded to your phone. Well, this evening we expect to see continued showers, if not thunderstorms, through the evening, although the uh, tornado watch will expire at 9 o'clock tonight. As you can see, it covers virtually the entire area, and the orange well to the north are where the severe thunderstorm warnings are. Even though the storms that are going through right now sound very strong, technically they have not qualified as severe. Thank you, Kirk. And we just want to add one thing before we go. The video of J.D. Vance was of his campaign, but the man in the video was not him. We just wanted to clarify that. That's all the time we have for tonight. Follow us online on WTAB.com and tonight at 10 and 11 for election results. Thank you for joining us.